Hey guys, welcome to part two of our TFL show and tell episode. Uh, last week, same time, same bat station, we took a walk through this bad boy, which is, of course, Nathan, the brand new 2018 Wrangler JL Sahara. That's right. Now, you may have noticed we have another Jeep in here, and that's Tommy's Jeep. That's actually our studio Jeep, too. And we've done a lot of uh, work to it, but it's still, in essence, a JK. Yeah, so we're going to show you the differences between the old JK and the new JL. But before we do that, you know, I have to introduce our new sponsors, Nathan. Uh, Rugged Radios, guys. These are our new sponsors. And if you go to their website, ruggedradios.com, you can get 25% off before the end of the year. Before the end of the year. And these are good for, you know, like spotting, right? Oh, on the trail, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, you're out there saying, hey, Roman, go left. Oh, hey. Hey, Roman, go left. No, 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 go left. 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 Oh, yeah, that's hey, right. Nathan, I've got more hair than you. Everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, the purpose of the show and tell, of course, is to let you kind of take a sneak peek at the Jeep. And we will be answering your questions as we progress throughout the show but let's kind of get up and let's do a show and tell dude yep absolutely now a lot of you guys had questions last week lots of questions so we're sort of getting back to those and then from there oh yeah lots so, of questions tommy here let's start at the front of the jeep we had some questions about the hood latch comparison between the jk and the jl well, yeah, that's a good one that's a really good one um obviously the biggest difference and let's show both of them is right now uh, the new jl has more of a waterfall grill Right, so it's not flat like the old JK. Plus, this headlight kind of intrudes, kind of like the old CJ, into the seven-slotted grill. So if you kind of pan back and forth, and you can show them the difference. And these headlights are, I think, eight inches are really big. Well, funny you say that. Let's measure. Ah, there we go. Let's see the actual headlight comparison. Okay. So I think one of the reasons these new headlights look so big is because we've got these new silver surrounds. Yeah, some people aren't fans of them. I, I'm actually not. I, I would rather not be there, but that's just me. So we're looking, the headlight itself is right around 7 inches. All right, how about the old JK? Well, the JK is... It's also right around 7 inches, of just from this quick measurement. Of course, the biggest difference is here and here, right? So they've taken the side marker and the turn signal, and they moved it from the side of the Jeep onto the front of the Jeep. Well, actually, yeah, this is a driving light, too. Right. Yeah, so what they did is they moved the turn signal well, right, yeah, from, from there to there. Yeah, yeah. so they, they moved it, well, you can see right there, yeah. on the fender itself. Um, and then you also have a daytime running light yep. right here on the new JL. Hey, Tommy, tell them what we're giving away during this episode. Let me show you. Yeah, we're giving it away uh, a Wrangler hat. We had it, Tommy was wearing it last time. And of course, uh, you guys liked it. I'm not a hat person, Nathan. You, you, I'm a hat person. You're a hat person. Observe, if you will. Wrangler. Huh? Nice. It even says Jeep on the back. And uh, one size ooh, fits all. One size fits all. And it has Essence of Tommy on it. So there you go. And we're working together with our friends over at the JL Wrangler Forum who are. Uh, uh, helping to put together a contest to give this away. And how are we giving it away, Tommy? So the guys over at jlwranglerforums.com, they started a poll, and it's a quiz. They're asking you guys how big you think the rear cubby storage is, the rear compartment is on the new Wrangler JL in terms of dimensions, cubic inches. So we're going to go back there and measure it on camera later. Yep. And the person that's closest, we're going to go on there and give it away. And we're going to give them this hat. I like this hat. Look at that. Look, even the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I so, want one. So um, obviously this isn't a stock uh, Wrangler. This is a sport uh, that we have slowly customized. And let's talk about the things that we've done to it. This is a best top front bumper. We have a ready worn um, winch that... I, I got it. So we got the worn Xeon 10S Platinum winch here. We've got a set of rugged ridge off-road lights here. Um, and what's cool about this worn Xeon 10S Platinum, I just think this is such a neat feature, is that you can actually plug accessories like these lights into the back of the winch and control it via the winch remote. So you don't have to cut any switch holes in your dashboard for stuff like that. So that's a pretty cool little feature. Um, now, of course, this is about as apples to oranges of a comparison that you can get here. We've got a two-door sport six-speed manual transmission customized JK versus the bone stock four-door JL Sahara. But there are still some comparisons that we can show. Looks like it's got a bit of a lift, too, and a little bit bigger tire, Tommy. Yeah, so we've got a three-and-a-half-inch Terraflex Alpine CT3 lift kit. Um, and then we've got a set of Firestone 35-inch uh, Destination MT tires and these awesome rugged Ridge 18 wheels. 
um, 18 inch wheels. Let's talk about these hood latches. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the main question. Yeah, and yeah. So I'll, I'll, why don't you unlatch, unlatch that one, and we can actually show the, the engines because they're the same engine, but they are a little bit different. So yes, they are. The problem with these hood latches, of course, was that you know they just undid like that, and if you got up to let's say 55, 60, 70, 80, uh, the hood would flutter. Well, let me show the guys something. This is actually rubber for those of you who didn't know and after a while rubber becomes a little bit slack when we had our uh rock um our red what was it hard rock yeah hard rock yep jeep uh we did thirty-seven thousand miles with it and we noticed over time the hood became more and more bouncy as we went down the highway well jeeps answered that with this it's a ratchet right it's it, it ratchets now it doesn't just use a little rubber bit to hold it down so now there's this ratchety bit that actually cinches down the hood, so we have seen no hood flutter on this bad boy. And the other reason is back there because of that vent. There's a little vent back here, it's actually functional, so the air comes in, and hopefully the air goes out over here and you don't get that flutter. Let's open it up and let's show the engine. Now here's a good question yeah. um, from Artin M. Yep. Hood lock question. Can you guys show if a hood lock can be installed in the new JL? And this brings us to another feature with the new JL that JT didn't have. A lot of the times uh, people would install aftermarket hood locks on the JL so you couldn't just open the hood and get to the engine because anyone can just walk by, open the hood and get to the engine. Well the new JL, they actually move the alarm system function to the hood as well. So if you have your alarm enabled, you've got these two little okay, switches here. Take a look. I'll, I'll do the van of white. Look. So if I pop the hood on this new JL when it's locked, the alarm will go off. That's a cool feature. Why don't you open up this one and look at the differences in the engines. There you go. There's my little Vanna White. And then this one too. Yeah, this one. I don't know why there's two. Backup. Back <laughs> I don't know. That's a really I, I good don't know. Question. If you guys out there know why there are two of these, uh, let us know. Uh, and uh, both of these uh, Jeeps have the uh, 3.6 inch uh, liter. 3.6 liter, yeah. 3.6 liter Pentastar V8. They Z6. Both V6. V6. They put. They both. God, I'm having a bad day. They both put out 285 horsepower. Yep, and 260 pound feet of torque. Now, Ian, if if you can come by, I don't know if this is we're able to do this, but one thing you'll notice is, um, well, first off, just visually, there's a new hood cover on the JL. So. I can go ahead and pull this one off. The new one, you do require Torx fix to pull off. This one just kind of is, is, is pressure mounted in place there. Um, and now you can see that here we've got the venerable 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. One thing you will notice though is the new one has a big cutout in, in the, the actual hood cover itself. And we'll show that in a second. And Dad, take a look in that cutout. Can you see this oil filter? Just yeah. by looking at it, there you go. So on the old one, you had to take the hood cover off to get to the oil filter. This new one, there's this handy little cutout here. So boom, it's right there. There's no removable, ne no removal necessary. Now Jason, Jeep says that they've really uh, tweaked and improved this Pentastar. Um, and I believe them because we got a phenomenal, anywhere from 22 to 24 MPG on the highway uh, when driving this. And of course, this is not a lifted Jeep, so it's got the standard tires, it's got the standard street tires, and you're going to get better fuel economy, but I believe that they really have improved it. The other thing I've noticed is that there's a, a cover on the battery here, like a little uh, battery uh, sweater. Battery sweater, yep. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure if that's because it's got a cold weather package or because they all have it. You know, I, I don't know. I, I can't answer that question. You will also notice the air box is still on the passenger side of the Jeep. Yep. Um, same thing with the battery. So the battery mounting position is still over there on the passenger side of the Jeep. Let's talk about the hood prop. Yeah, Mark Allen, the, the chief designer for Jeep, is really proud of this. You can do this with the new one. Ooh, look at that. You all can, the way up onto all, the cab. All the way up, and then you can control it. But Tommy, try to do that on the old one. You can't. Well, yeah, but you can still do the hood thing here. You right, just but, can't do it with the prop. With the prop, yeah. yeah. So the, the prop is mounted to the the body of the Jeep and not the hood like on the new one. This, this is Andre here. A lot of people are asking to show the suspension differences. So in well, a little while, can we show that? We can show the suspension differences, but keep in mind that one is completely custom. It's completely custom. That's a Terraflex lift on it. And this one is completely stock. So we're, you're not really going to get uh, uh, apples to apples. Yeah, I saw that too. Take it's a look at this. Yeah, they actually have some kind of insulation or deadening. It's, it's a sound deadening material. Mark Allen was talking about this whole thing as part of the reason why this was so much quieter than the previous model. The other thing you'll notice, and I don't know if Ian can show it here, but um, the hood or the grill kink. 
Yeah, we just like about the just, waterfall. Yeah, but just like the old, this is CJ. kind of reminiscent of no, no, actually not the CJ, the YJ. So this little kink right here into the grill is reminiscent of the CJ, but the fact that the grill actually has a little bend in it, that's straight out of a YJ. And the other cool thing is the air intake is right here, which you can see. And if you get the Jeep Performance part, JPP uh, snorkel, and you go to your dealership, they will actually cut the hole in the side of the hood where you can attach the snorkel, and then there's attaching points right back there, and right you, back can, you can have a snorkel. I just, Tommy, I just love snorkels. I've become a big fan of snorkels. I don't know why. I don't think I'll ever use them, but I just think they're the coolest thing ever. I want to snorkel badly. Um, let's talk about the, the, the kind of different bumper options and bumper configurations. So like we said, this is a Sahara. Um, this is a plastic outer on this bumper, but we still have the dual tow hooks right in the front of the Jeep and then the newly improved fog lights down front. But there's also a Rubicon bumper, which is metal and the ends are removable. Yeah, they have the bolts up top, kind of like the old uh, Rubicon setup. Uh, but, you know, there are some differences in terms of exterior design. And, you know, what they wanted to do was update everything in terms of the way they look. So they're similar to the ones from the past, but they're a little different. So before we keep moving on to the rest of the Jeep and show the differences between the old and the new, Andre, are there any questions that we can answer while we're at the front of the Jeep? Well, people are wondering, you know, overall dimensions, you know, have they stretched the Jeep? You know, how did, how did it change? Yeah, actually they did. Yeah, so the new Jeep is uh, two and a half inches longer. Uh, about the the same, is longer. Yeah, about the same width. And that gives you more legroom in the back uh, when you're looking at this four-door. Um, so it does feel bigger, doesn't it? It feels more yeah. substantial. And if this, I got to tell you guys, you can't tell because this one's lifted, but if this were a regular non-lifted Jeep, this Jeep would look much more substantial. There's just much more kind of a, 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 a manly kind of gnarly quality to it. Uh, this one already looks that way because of the bumper and the lift, but yeah, if they were apples to apples, you could see the difference immediately. Any other questions, Andre? No, let's move on. All right. Oh, All right. One more thing in the front. Do you mind closing that bed? Yeah, close it. Do you want to close it? Both of them? Yeah, both of them. Um, I believe they call this a lunchbox latch, is what this is called, actually. Is, Watch your hands. Yep, you're good. Okay. Um, that's not going to bend or go anywhere. No, that, that's on there good. Notice that we no longer see the Jeep logo on the front of the new JL. It's, it's no longer there. There's no room for it. Mark right? Allen said he moved it to the side of the Jeep board belongs. Yeah, that's what he said. And then look at the hood differences. It's very, it's, oh, they're, I mean, very they're both the same color, but this one is basically flat and not very interesting. That one, on the other hand. Yeah, so if you can see these components right here, you know that the windshield can fold, right? Well, it folds so much faster. We actually did a video on that with Mark Allen, the guy who you know is responsible for this. And this is a much more aerodynamic component. And when the window folds down on it, it holds in a, well, less cumbersome way, I would say. And then there's a strap that comes with the vehicle that you can hook on to the front end, I believe. It's actually on to right does, on this go right on yep, here? Okay, it goes right on to here. Um, you'll also see that, you know, this is not the Rubicon hood. The Rubicon hood looks different, but even the Sahara hood has a, a bulge in it. Right that we didn't see yet. There's a, and it's noticeable when you're driving down the road. You can really see that bulge. On the JK, uh, we don't have the bulge. You'll also see we've got separate bump stops here for the hood and separate washer nozzles. Whereas, yeah, see if you come by. And then our little, our little loop here for the fold down windshield is right in the center. If we come over to the JL, take a look at this. It's all integrated into one unit. Right back here. Yep, so we've got the squirter nozzle, the bump stop, and the loop in basically two units across the hood, which is pretty cool. I'm willing to bet that with this extra material around it, it might work better in the snow and cold weather. Yeah. You know, because again, that's one thing that we noticed when we were going across the country. Snow and gook would get in the way, and then, of course, it makes for a difficult spray. And, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Miguel had a question about safety, and obviously, Jeep has improved safety overall in the JL. And he was worried about the hood actually popping up and breaking the windshield in, a, in an accident. Well, the, hat, the latches were designed to be strong. Yeah, right. yeah. That's, the, all, that's the, as far as and, we know. And keep in mind, this also has a latch underneath. There's a secondary latch right under here that you have to move to the side to open it up. So I would imagine that's you know a little bit safer that way as well. Question about uh, the antenna. Oh, yeah. Still the old mass style antenna. Yep, with the wraparound little extra wire under the skin type thing. I was swore that by JL they would have gotten rid of this, but um, it is actually pretty useful going into parking garages because this will start moving and bouncing around before you hit the top of the Jeep, especially uh, when it's lifted. The mirror difference, as somebody was asking. Yeah, can we show the mirror over They're here? They're different, that's for sure. 
Yeah, they're they're Ooh. actually really different. You know, it's amazing that not a single panel really has been left untouched on this jail. When you get them side by side, you can really see that everything is new. Even the way that this bulkhead is designed is completely new. Um, you can see we've still got the Torx bix right here. You were telling me too that these are designed to literally take aftermarket components right away. So you're able to put lights and stuff on here much easier than you yeah, were. Yeah, they have a plate that goes right on there. You can just pop it right on. Uh, I mean, that was and that was done, of, you know, by forethought. And it's kind of interesting that they did so it that let me, way. Let me let me let me speak to the, the safety because that's a big issue for a lot of people and, and deservedly so. First of all, the new Jeep, as far as I know, as of last time I checked, has not been crash test, so we don't know if it's safe or not. Uh, what we do know is that this comes standard with uh, four airbags. There are two in the front, one in the driver's um, uh, steering wheel, one on the passenger side, and there, an air, there's an airbag right here also in the um, seat. So there's four airbags. This one, unless you paid optionally on the JK, you only got two. You only got the two in the front. Now, four airbags today, you know, isn't a lot. I mean, a lot of cars have six, six eight. some have eight, some have even 10, right? Some even have like uh, airbags for your knees, right? We're still kind of at the at the bottom of airbag technology in the new Jeep. How does it crash this? Because that's the other part of it. Obviously, they say that they've improved the structural rigidity of the cage, and that's a big part of it, right? Uh, modern vehicles have crumple zones, so when it crashes, the energy is absorbed into the vehicle and not into the driver or passenger. And of course, this was designed now probably 12, 13 years ago, maybe even 15 years ago. So the technology in here is going to be a lot older than the technology in here. One more note on that point, and it's something I really do like on the new JL, and it has to do with the windshield. There's, there's a, actually, the, the sports part now has a, a solid A pillar, right? So right. if I fold this down, there is still a member of that roll bar right here. Sports bar. Sports kind of bar. Sports bar. Tell them about the sports bar. Tell them why it's a sports bar. Why is it a sports bar? Well, okay. A roll bar would imply that the Jeep would support you if and when it rolls. A sports bar implies that you can mount things like lights onto it. So Jeep does not call it a roll bar because I'm not sure um, that they have crash tested it to such an extent that if this thing rolls down a mountainside, it'll actually support the weight of the vehicle. So Liability. It's sport, yeah, it's a sports bar. Okay. And well, it always has been a sports bar. Yeah, yep. always. Yep, always. Frank wants to know, will a JL uh, improve his chances to get a date? Hell yeah. Frank, it'll help a lot if you get the uh, Rubicon version, especially on the soft top. Pull the top down, other things might drop. <laughs> so speaking of things that like are what, kind Nathan? Of, so speaking of things that are kind of unique, I'm, and I'm not a big fan of it. I know Tommy's 50-50. Um, Easter eggs. All these little Show Easter the differences. eggs all over Show the place. Show the Easter egg over there. Uh, so on the JK, um, you know, we've got on the side of the windshield, you'll see we've got a little, it looks like a four-door JK Unlimited climbing up the side of the windshield. Yeah, I got a Willys over that's here. That's actually changed, yeah. So the new JL has a Willys, which is, I think that's actually way cooler that they put the Willys. And I think we found an Easter egg that nobody has seen. I, I have just not noticed. seen this anywhere. Nathan just found it. I literally just found it while Roman was doing his thing. Um, it looks like a pair of sandals is on the hood. I kid you not. And I rubbed it to see if it was something that I left on there. Nope. If you, I don't know if you can get that on camera. Can you see these two things sitting there? And that's a very Mark Allen thing, by the way. Keep going. If you can get a little bit closer. See that? Those are sandals. Yeah, and then there we've got our new flat fender wheels. And then right there is the wheelies. Well, Nathan, there you have it. A TFL <laughs> exclusive. You heard it we here. Are Sandals <laughs> on the plastic shroud of the hood. <laughs> you know, honestly, I'm not a big Our fan. Work is done for today. Yeah, we're done. Let's go home. We're done. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Easter eggs everywhere. I don't mind this so much, but some of the other uh, products that Jeep makes have them everywhere, and I think it's a little much. In this case, I think it's very tactful. That set of sandals over there, we are going to be approaching our friends at Jeep and discussing that with them to make sure that they are actually sandals and not something else. I think they're intentional. Here we can yep. see our new vent, right? Yep, that's the other side of the vent. Um, and this looks really good, too. Now, they moved the Jeep uh, logo to the side of the Jeep, right? Um, and we've got new Sahara lettering. And if you ever have a chance to see it in person, it, it looks much higher quality. I love the way that it, it protrudes from the side of the Jeep. And then, of course, the Wrangler Unlimited. That's pretty similar to what it was on the JK. Windshield, not hard to move either on the JL. Well, the roof, guys. Oh, yep. Roof's going back. Ha-ha! 
this is one of my favorite features. Now, uh, what's cool about this is that it gives you a panoramic sunroof and you don't have to use those freedom tops, which were, let's face it, a pain in the butt when you had to undo all those weird screws and bolts. And this was just a really great way to open up the top of the Jeep and enjoy the fresh air. Now, uh, Tommy has the best top, which has the, what's it called? The, uh, um, what's, it, what's your top called? Oh, it's called the uh, Best Top Trek Top NX Black Twill. Yeah. And it's, it's a... got this Sunrider feature where you can just flip it open. Yeah, so it does the same thing. But this does it all the way. This is a feature that has not yet been priced, so we don't know how much it will cost. And it's not available until sometime in the spring. But I'm thinking it's going to be thousands, Nathan. Yeah, and then on top of that, remember that there's other components that come off as well. These rear quarter windows completely detach and come out. And there's two uh, components here that you turn down. Here, why don't pull we it out. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And a lot of people were asking about to compare the dashboards and the interior. Oh, we'll get there. Okay, ready? So we've got the two things flipped, that, and then up. There you go. There you go. And it, it doesn't weigh really anything. So if you have the top open, you have the windows open, and you take the windows off in the back, then you're really close to being completely open topped. And at the same time, it only takes minutes to put everything back together. Sports bar, now body color too. Yep. That's one thing that Mark Allen was very proud hey, of. They why got why don't you of... guys do your measuring line back there? Okay. Or what? Yeah, oh, Tommy, we're, yeah. Tommy will grab the tape. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Can you move the uh, mic? Uh, yeah. There you go, Andrew. You do the measuring. So you're measuring this little cubby down below. And both, actually. The oh, cubby okay. And the whole cargo area. Well, let me let me get out of here while you whip that out. Well, we got to walk around it first. Okay. And this is for the hat. Is that right? This is for, for the, hat. the hat. Okay. So first of all, Jeep made the tailgate wider. That's why they had to move the license plate down low. So this opening is and um, Roman, do you have a, your phone calculator? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, so 41 inches. Look. I don't know if you can see that. 41 inches wide. So that's been made wider, which is really useful. Um, now, if I measure the floor here to the tailgate... Oh, look what fell in, Andre. That's what we're playing for. Ooh. <laughs> New font. Uh, product placement. Okay, so what's my first measurement? 41. 41. Times? 37 is the floor length here. 37. Right, and finally, let's measure the height. The height of this opening, which is basically from the floor all the way to the top of the... That's 36 and a quarter. Let me double check that. 36.4? 0.25. So what does that come out to? 1,341. Cubic inches. Cubic inches. That's how that right? And um, you can work so... With the feet, don't you? No, oh, inches, okay. So yeah, so... Whoever, I guess we just gave it away. <laughs> well, somebody came out earlier and said, any, any answers before we Here, actually give it away? So before we do uh, go further, let me secretly measure the cubby hole, which is in here. Okay, I'm ready. Let me secretly measure that. So they've also kind of made this a little bit wider. Okay, the first measurement, I can see it myself. I'm not gonna let anybody know. Uh, okay, so that's kind of hard for me to read your mind. Okay. Sorry, bro. Second measurement. Okay, I got it. I, I don't. It has a little kink in it, so it's going to be a little bit approximated. And finally, okay, I got it. So we'll let a couple minutes, okay. give them a couple minutes to guess. Hold on, you have to get the numbers. You really should put in the numbers. Yeah, put in hold the on, numbers. Hold on, let me, let me do that. Okay. I'll answer this question. Oh, you go for it. oh we've got a question. Oh, we forgot already? Yeah, he did. Because I wasn't reading his mind. It's my fault. You forgot Yeah, sorry, guys. My fault. <laughs> All right, go. Go answer the question. Well, I need the tape measure. That's going to take a while. Hang on. Just got it. Okay. Here was a question. How wide is the cargo opening? No, that's a good question. It's actually wider than it was on the JK. So if you notice, first thing, they actually moved the license plate from the body to the bumper, and that's so they can get 
the cargo opening as wide as possible. So let's see what we're looking at here. From rubber to rubber. That was 41. Am I right? Yep. You look. Yep. Yeah, you're spot on. So 41 inches. Should we compare it to the JK? Let's bring it on over here. Let's do a comparison. I'm sure I've got stuff back there. You do have stuff back there. Look what kind of hat you have back here. Take a guess. You have another Jeep hat. <laughs> <laughs> My, which is full of Jeep hats. Okay, so on this two-door JK, Yeah, it's a little bit less, so we're under 41 inches. Well, <laughs> so it's about 41 Yeah, that's actually inches? pretty close. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. that's actually quite, quite surprising. Inch. Okay! <laughs> Andre, the, the Jeep is pretty much 41 back here, too. They're both 41. What? Yeah. But but Jeep told us the uh, the uh, tailgate is wider. It's no, not. no, seriously, check it out. It's 41. It's literally 41 inches wide. No how, about, how about tall? See if it's taller. Let's measure the, measure the uh, tailgate. Okay, yeah, we can measure the tailgate. I bet you it's not. I bet you it's the same. Okay, right around 18 inches. Oh, this one is deeper, so the, the tailgate itself is taller, so about 20 inches. And of course, this one has this cool feature. Why don't you give them a close-up of that, Ian? Can you turn that light off? Yeah. There you go. Nice. And then the other thing you'll notice back here is the rear third brake light, which is adjustable now. You can raise it up, right, Nathan? If right. You're gonna a if you have tire. a larger tire, then this is this can go up and then simply be over it. And also in the center of the uh, wheel is a backup camera. Now that is standard for all Wranglers. And here, have a look. So that sits right in the middle. Um, there were some aftermarket companies and competitors that would put them in a tire cover. But in this case, right there, standard in the middle. All right, why don't you guys show me the interiors because they're really different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So start with this one first. You want the light on the outside? Yeah, bring that. Uh, and guys, keep guessing the cubbyhole volume for the hat. Okay, so Ian, if you want to go set up, I'll go jump in the passenger seat. Can you move that mic on? Oh. Okay, so this is the interior of a JK, um, and what you might notice is it's pretty much a sea of black. There's a lot of black plastics going on here. Um, now, of course, this isn't quite an apples-to-apples -apples comparison because this is a Sport S Wrangler, but we do have some stuff that we can talk about when compared to the JL. First of all, power windows have moved, so they used to be up high right here, right below the radio, in fact. Um, and same operation pretty much as on the JL. It's one touch down, but then you have to hold the switch up for the windows to go up. I wish on both of these Jeeps that it was auto down and auto up. Um, both Jeeps have round vents. Both have the oh, you know what handle. Um, and that's pretty much where similarities end because they're really different. The JK Dash post 2011 when they updated it, it became a lot more curvaceous. So you can see we've got some curves going on. We've got curves toward the windshield, and that's really changed again for the JL. So we've got a lot more upright dash on the JL, and in that Sahara, we also have a lot more high quality plastics, high quality materials. So the JK, everything is pretty hard touch plastics, which is fine in my opinion. It's a Jeep, I can live with it, but it, it really does make a difference how improved the materials are on the new Rango JL. Other things you'll notice is we still have speakers up here right by the windshield. Um, right where the A pillar would start right there. We both have this cubby up top here. Um, and then take a look down here, Ian, if you can, at these little nets. So we've got cargo nets on the JL and the JK, but notice on the JK, they end about halfway through the door panel. On the JL, they continue throughout the whole length of the door. And that brings us up here to another really important point. Uh, my dad has this issue every time he's riding in the Jeep, he'll put his leg up and he'll constantly be bumping that lock and unlock switch. In the JL, it's recessed behind some plastic trim so that that's not always an issue. Uh, and the door handles are a huge improvement on the JL. I do like on the JK how they make this super pleasant See if I can do it now that the door is open. But they make this super pleasant thunk when you lock and unlock the door, as it does on the new JL as well. So 
that's pretty much Show the top too. Oh yeah, take a look at this. Soft tops on the JK and the JL do this. You can undo some latches and pull it back. Um, of course, it doesn't pull over the back of the rear passengers. You'd have to pull the top off to do that if you wanted that on the um, JK or what JL. Kind of What'd you say? What kind of top? This is the best top Trek top NX black twill. And take a look at this too, new mirrors. So it's amazing that everything is new on that JL. One thing I like more about the JK than JL are these little map lights. These have gone away on the new JL. There's only the dome light mounted in the center. No, there's lights on there too. Those little lights are on Under here? Under the dome now. No, that's what I said. But they not moved... just the dome light, they also have little spotlights. Right, they, you they move around. But hang on one sec here. And the MMUSA Jeep that Nathan and Andre went around the country in, they were able to move and position these lights how they could, however they wanted so they could get um, light wherever they needed. Uh, it's a small thing, but Let's go into the JL. Yeah, jump, in, jump in, come right Do you want to show them the doors? Yeah, I'll show the difference in the doors. You People come are wondering about the glass opening, how the size difference between the glass opening. Oh, that's a good question. It's about the same. No, it's not. No, no. It's very, very you different. Have tape? Yeah, it's. We'll yeah. measure it. That's a good way to tell. To me, it looks about the same, but Tommy says it's not, so let's measure it. I'm going to bet you five bucks it's the same. Um, we'll take a look. Take the bet. Take the bet. No, hang on, hang on. I'm going to do it. I got it. Oh, okay. I got it. Take a look at this, straight across, belt line here, straight across, JL, dips. There's a dip here. So heights, Andre, do you have a calculator? Don't no, worry, just, 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 just the height of the line. Okay, so height, the max height is 16 inches on JL. On JK, it is 15 and three quarters of an inch. Whoa, whoa, yeah, quarter of an inch difference there. Here's a quick question though. Aren't the doors on the uh, two-door version of this vehicle different? You know, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, should we do length? Yeah. Okay, maximum length. What's that? 26 and a quarter on the JK. This is a two-door JK. Oh, they're actually longer on the two-door JK. <laughs> but that's the question. Is, is, is it possible that the... Yeah, so it could be possible that the Oh, sure, not the only money, doors. of course. Yeah, Do you yeah. want to show them the... Go up in there and show them the inside. Well, no, I want to show them the doors. Let's right. take a look. Right. Yeah, door handles, too. New JL. Yep, first of all, new door handles. This is huge, guys, actually. It's so much easier, especially like when there's ice covering it or you're freezing your butt off and you want to shove your phlegm in the door. Yep, so this is a traditional pole door handle on the old JK. I don't know, I kind of like these. Yeah, fully. Uh, it's a button. So it's a button, and you'll also notice the doors are completely free swinging, right? Yeah. So anytime, and it's a small thing, but if you're parked on a hill or you're off road and you're trying to get on in on an incline, they'll either swing itself open and slam into the car next to you or want to close on your legs. Or on the new JL, ta -da. look at that. A Proper door. A detent. It's also the, the rear door, too. The uh, tailgate area also does that. Right. So it's, a, it's across the board. Um, seats, these are new and kind of interesting. I don't know if you noticed these, Nathan. Uh, adjustments, seat back adjustments are pole handles. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, so on the new JL, they're pole handles. If we go over here, back to the JK, because why not? We've got it here. You can see that back there that we've got, um, you know, a, a more traditional handle for getting into the rear seat or reclining the seat. People want you to hit the doors off, Tommy. On which one? Both of them, of course. <laughs> we won't be taking the doors off of this show. Yeah, we don't have enough time. Yeah. It's about two hours worth of... Yeah. This is a cushion. And I use this cushion in the JK... Lumbar support. Because the JK doesn't have a lumbar support adjustment. And uh, when I'm out road tripping to places in the JK to go off-road, I like to have a little bit of lumbar support. In the JL, they finally added lumbar support with this knob here. So it's finally adjustable but only on the driver's seat. Well, that's all that's important. <laughs> I mean, who cares about that? Let's jump in, Tommy. Show me. It's yeah, hop okay. in Should we go around or from here? Um, yeah. New door handles. So you can see we've got new door handles. These are the new unlock and lock switches that I was telling you about. So they're recessed now, so you're not always hitting them with your legs. They're also you sit out of the way like by comparison. They are yeah, out of the they, way. They just move them. And then full length net down here with built-in handles underneath so you can pull the doors off. And this is also new. They put the mirror controls on the doors now, um, so that's 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 different for JL. Uh, coming over here to the left side, we can see mirror or light controls are no longer on the stock; they're on the dash itself. And these are much higher quality, the turn signal levers. 
much much higher quality they feel like a quality item now steering wheel all new st uh, still leather i have a leather wrapped steering wheel in that jk it's leather wrapped in this jl but more bright accents along the steering wheel so it's these little things that really improve how light and airy the interior feels but like i said the entire layout is just so much more upright when compared to the jk um, and i think that's a good thing i, I really think they've cleaned it up um, and ergonomically it's better as well of course we do have push button start um, and then an all new mirror, SOS assist, our power top up here. We've got home link in the rear visor so you can program that to your garage door. LED lights in the visor and the gauge cluster. I don't know Ian if you can take a look at this gauge cluster and we'll go over to the JK at the end to show you the difference but we no longer have dot matrix displays. Look at that Sahara so all new gauge cluster as well. Show some of the features in there. Yeah, I'll awesome. run through them here. Um, one so thing I did see. notice is if you're taller, and my dad notices too, you have the zero, you have the mile an hour indicator digitally in the top portion of the gauge cluster, but it is blocked by this little cover. Accessory ignition on. There's our miles an hour. Uh, vehicle info. We've got tire pressures. Uh, coolant temp, trans temp, oil temp, oil pressure, oil life, and battery voltage. Um, here is our drivetrain, our off-road mode, if you will, our off-road section. So we've got uh, pitch and roll, and then it shows you what's locked or unlocked. And then the transfer case um, down here is our range in miles per gallon, 4.7. Uh, it's because we're not running right now, I think. <laughs> We've been av averaging, what did we average that? Really incredible mileage. About 22. About 22, yep. And then our trip info, uh, start-stop technology, because this new 3.6 liter has start-stop, audio, messages, and screen setup. And of course, my favorite feature is you still have a traditional, pr you still have a traditional brake. There's a little space over here for this new, really, uh, look at that, look at the keys. Let's compare the differences. Yeah, let me pull yeah. mine out of my pocket here. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, that, that is a huge difference. We also have, uh, on this one, automatic uh, remote starting. And you can keep this in your pocket because this Jeep has uh, remote access without having to use a key or a button. Yeah, but let me pull mine off because there's one thing you should show. Go ahead and pop the key part of that out. Yep. I mean, you know, it's it's grown quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I like it. I think it's it looks like a jerry can. <laughs> it does look like a jerry can. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. And then look at all these cool controls. I mean, we've got stop start, of course. Uh, you talked about this. Uh, this is probably one of the bigger improvements. We've got uh, more media, uh, more ability to actually charge our phones, and same thing in here. Uh, we've got our toolkit, and which lets you drop the windscreen. And there's more. Well, you can't see it, but there's more USB ports hidden down there. Yep. Uh, all new transfer case shifter, all new automatic transmission shifter, all new manual transmission shifter. Uh, these little window switches are rubberized now, which is nice. And then we've got our cancellation here. And a big 8 inch uh, display. Yep, you connect with, display. With all kinds of performance pages. Uh, let me show you something in the back, which is my favorite. This is a really cool little feature. Performance pages? Yeah, well, not performance pages, yeah. off road pages. Sure, the buster. Open the door. So now, now, check this out. You have uh, two little handles up here. One does this. Look at that. You can just drop that so you can actually see out the back. And of course, the other one uh, drops the entire seat. And here's my favorite part of the seat. You, you of course, have cup holders right now in the, in the center armrest. But look how smart they were when they designed it. So you've got your cup holders in here so you can use when you're sitting down. But check this out because let's say you only drive 40% of the seat, actually 60%. Look what happens. Those cup holders become cup holders for this person seated here, so they still function as cup holders. And of course, they've moved the thumper from in the back to the side, which makes a lot more sense. Uh, and just a lot more room back here. Here are the lights that Tommy was talking about. So you still have them. There are four of them now, two facing forward, two facing backwards. And my favorite second feature is you still have the speakers above your head, which is really cool because, let's face it, your ears are behind your head. <laughs> Well, mine aren't, but everybody else is. Just, just, just a quick note. People, people are asking, are we going to compare, take both Jeeps off-road, JK and JL, and compare them off-road?
And when is that coming? So uh, oh, that's a really good question. So we would love to take the JK and the JL off road, and we did some long and hard thinking about it. But there's a substantial problem. First of all, this is a Sahara, uh, which isn't the problem. But the problem is, of course, that that is a fully lifted two door with you know massive 35s, whereas these are street tires for the most part. Yeah, and it would be like taking in a way a race car against a street car right or in this case a pure off-roader against more of a street version of it and it wouldn't really tell you much because really we want to go apples to apples right you really want to go rubicon to rubicon lift to lift uh, 35 to 35 and not not such a big difference so obviously um, if we had the stock it would be much better but because of our friends right here we keep uh, we keep making it better. So, uh, but yeah. when we get a Rubicon, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. maybe maybe we can do it. Yeah, if and when we get a Rubicon, we'll definitely we will do get it. A Rubicon. But we did something really fun today, guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. So so we have a brand new um, long term uh, project truck, which is a Hummer, and so <laughs> we thought it'd be fun to actually drag race this JL against the Hummer. And this week in our offices, we also have a BMW X3. Yep. So we did a classic TFL match, and we just got back from it, where we drag race the Hummer versus the JL versus the brand new X3, and that'll be up this weekend. That's right. And by the way, statistics prove that Hummer people hate Jeep people, and Jeep people hate Hummer people. This is true. Yes, Can Tommy. you um, get yourself into the driver's seat and show how far the seat goes back? Yeah, oh, there you go. yeah it doesn't go back. Well, I'm 6'2". I'll show you how far back it goes. Now, keep in mind, I sit straight up when I drive. That's the way I was taught. I like having my, I'll show you. I like having my wrists kind of right there. And so I'm gonna move this back as, it, as far back as it goes. And that's it guys. I am, I am for me almost too close. But what you can do is you can telescope the wheel. And of course you can move it up and down. Now, the problem is I still can't see the top of this. I'm still too tall. Uh, and yeah, you know, it is still a little claustrophobic for, for big guys. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more Let's call it belly room, <laughs> and let's call it shoulder room up here. Uh, but you know, we did drive it almost a thousand miles from Phoenix to Moab to Denver, uh, and Tommy and I, uh, you know, got kind of became friends with it. And it's not as comfortable as our long-term Ford Raptor. I mean, that's just a really good long-term truck. But nevertheless, it did okay. It's much more civilized. It's no longer kind of just a pure off-road vehicle where you have to uh, pay a price for having a vehicle that's so capable off-road. Okay, we got a really interesting question, yes. and we might as well try it. Yeah. Which set of windows roll down faster? Because the JK, someone was saying, is super fast roll down window. You want to have a race? You want to have a, a roll down window Hell race? yeah, I'll race you. Oh. All right, all right. Who's gonna, who's gonna, Andre, yes, Nathan, you start this. I'll start. All right, you start this. We're gonna have a race, auto down race. Okay, you gotta do your passenger, I'll do my driver. Yeah. Will I go down without starting the Jeep? Uh, don't put your foot on the pedal. Yeah. But do the accessories. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got the accessories. Yeah. Leave your door open. All right. Leave your door open so right. we can see it. All right. Can you see both of them? Every time you should open too. You can do it. All right. I'm All ready right, to ready? go, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 And go. Tommy wins. Hey, Tommy. How about? Hold on. How about up? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Ready? And go. Ooh. Oh, there you have it. So the old man is a little bit slower getting up and down. <laughs> yeah, well, after a few years, these things happen. <laughs> Somebody else asked um, the clearance from the floor to the running board. Yeah. Uh, no, on the Sahara. So thank you for asking. Uh, let's let's measure that really fast. None of us are fans of running boards, by the way. No, we don't like running boards. Andre wants to rip off the ones that are on the Hummer. I do. Sixteen. A little bit less than 16. Almost 16 inches are all the way across. So that's fairly good clearance. Yeah, but on the Rubicon, you get rock sliders. Yeah, much higher. Much higher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Taller yeah. tire, taller, taller fender. fender. Yeah, taller. yeah, everything else. Everything is taller. Uh, do we have parking sensors, people wondering, on this new JL? We do. Yes, we do. We sure do. Yeah. yeah. You know, that begs the question. So the new vehicle has these sensors built into it and, of course, the license plate. And so on our uh, long-term JK, you'll notice that we have, once again, a best top rear bumper. Yep. And swapping this out is actually super simple. You undo a couple bolts, you pull out the old one, it's plastic, you push this back in, and you're set to go. Here, 
it's not going to be so easy, right? There's wiring. Because there's wiring and there's sensors. And if you want to keep these sensors, the, the new aftermarket, if you choose to go that way, bumper will, is going to have to have holes for these sensors. Mm -hmm. Well, you bring up a good point, too, because on the, the JL Rubicon, they say you can put a 35 inch tire on the Rubicon from the factory. Uh, on the JK, of course, I lifted mine three and a half inches. I probably could have done with a smaller lift if I still wanted to do 35s. Um, but I had to upgrade my rear tire carrier hinges because the stock tailgate would eventually warp the tub or, or bend the hinges. And you still have to do that on the new one. Yep, so I have my Rugged Ridge HD tire carrier on this JK. But if you have a Rubicon, you're running 35 inch tires, uh, and you want to put a 35 inch spear, you're still going to have to do that on the new JL. Here's another issue that I think is going to come up. So uh, this new Jeep has blindside monitoring, blind which is spot. blind yeah. spot, which is which is great. And the electronics of it are built into this tail light, which is right here. So that's why it sticks out so far. I was talking to Mark Allen and he said basically they had to get this tail light to stick out beyond the fender so that you can tell if there was a car in your blind spot. You can see this one doesn't obviously have it. But the problem there is you know you break this, it's pretty expensive to fix because there's not a lot going on in there except for a light. You break this it's going to be expensive. Let's it's, show them what they look like here. Yeah, let's show them what the taillights look like because they're really cool actually. They've got kind of a, a, a renegade-like almost X to them. See, right there? Looks much cooler. A lot brighter. A lot brighter, yeah. Actually, all the lights on the new JL are far brighter than the standard uh, uh, JK. So who won the head, Andre? Do we know yet? Do we know who won well, the let's, head? Let's ask one more time. I just converted the full cargo volume to uh, cubic feet as I measured it. So, um, so in cubic feet, please make your guesses. So we'll do, we'll try one more round yep. and see who gets the closest for the unlimited four door rear cargo volume behind the second row seat. Now I think it's important we talk about pricing. Of course, this one, uh, the old JK started at about 25,000 if you got the base soft top with the steel wheels. It was, without, yeah, without, 24 inch. Yeah, without air conditioning. The new one starts at about 27, so you're looking at a two and a half thousand dollar price increase on the base model, and if you go all the way up to the Rubicon with all the bells and goodies, you're probably looking close to a $60,000 Jeep, guys. I mean, that's really, we, we configured this one, it was almost 50,000, I think it was like 47, 48,000, yeah. and that's not the Rubicon. Now, that's like, that sounds like a lot of money, right? $50,000 for a Jeep. But remember, we just drag raced the BMW X3, which started at 47, but the one that we tested was 57. Yeah. So I mean, that you know, 57 thousand dollars for a BMW with a two-liter turbo, which you also be able to get, by the way. There will be four engine choices in case you're curious. So it's coming out with the 3.6-liter Pentastar in the spring of next year. They're going to get the two-liter mild hybrid turbo which we drove and it was very fast what was our time andre like it was under seven seconds under seven seconds 60, yeah. yeah zero to 60. then next year the one that i'm really jonesing for um well the one i'm really jonesing for and you'll agree nathan oh, yeah, yeah. is a cheap truck the jt yeah with the diesel baby with the diesel but then the diesel comes to the wrangler not the truck but to the wrangler and by the way we know nothing official about the jt right jeep has not even acknowledged the, the fact that there Some, is a jeep uh, truck J, coming. jt forum um guys, JL Wrangler Forum yeah, guys yeah. and JT Forum guys have some information as far as like the frame right. measurements. But, but it's all unofficial. But unofficial stuff, yeah, but we, no, we, according to the rumor, it will have the diesel engine. Right, hey Tommy, come over here before we wrap this up. Yeah, Mike, I, want to, I want to ask you a question. Let me finish the, let me okay. finish the engines. And then finally, uh, they announced in LA that there is a full full-on hybrid coming in 2020. Plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrid. Go ahead, Andre. Probably something similar to the one they have in the Pacifica. That would make sense. Well, I do have a little bit of a question about pricing. You said a fully loaded Rubicon JL is around 57. Okay. Could, be, could get that could, high. Could get yeah. that high. That's with the V6. Right. Now, that doesn't right. count for the power top, which will be extra. Yeah. Uh, the two liter turbo will be a little bit extra. Yeah. And the diesel will be extra. Oh, so yeah. all of a sudden, you're over $60,000 potentially. Possibly. So in my opinion, the, you're getting into really high price territory. Yeah. yeah, but the reality is if you look at uh, trucks that are modified, let's say something like the Raptor, that's a really expensive truck that can be easily well into the 60s, am I right? Yep, I agree. So in terms of combating a vehicle like that off-road, you're going to require a lot of uh, boxes being checked. I think it's fair, guys, to say that we're all really impressed 
by the new Wrangler. And like you said, Nathan, we're kind of Jeep fanboys, having driven a Jeep to the 50 highest points in all 50 states, you yeah, know? Well, yeah, and Motor yeah, Mountain Mountain Mountain. USA, you can check out those episodes. These guys put in a lot of seat time. I mean, talking about your iron butt, these guys did it. <laughs> 900 miles a day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these guys did it. So we are fans of the vehicle. We spent a lot of time in it. So I think it's fair to wrap this up by asking the simple question. If it were your money, and I'll start with Andre and I'll kind of go around, uh, and you were getting a new Jeep Wrangler, which one would you get, Andre? And this is because I drove the new 2-liter turbo yep. in Arizona at the event. I will get the 2-liter turbo any day in the Rubicon. That's my choice. 2-liter turbo, Rubicon, um, mojito green. Okay. Oh, well, you I like the green. <laughs> I like that green a lot. All right, Nathan, you're next. Okay, I like the mojito green, but I'd wait for the truck, and I'd get it with a manual transmission, which means you can only get it with the V6. Yes. From what I hear, none of the other engines will be available with the manual transmission. And I played with it a little bit, and it felt really good. It's totally different than the old manual transmission. The jail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd wait for the truck. I'd probably go for Mojito Green, and then I would burn his because he's not supposed to have the same color as me. All right. And, Tommy, you now have had uh, basically a long-term uh, Jeep for two years. Yeah. You got it in May two years ago, so it's coming up on two years, and you've done a lot of improvements to it. So, you know, a lot of your kind of heart and soul is in this Jeep. Mm -hmm. But I still want to know, if you were to get a new one, what would you get? Um, I'd probably, I'd still get the two-door, because I like the two-door Jeeps, and I just don't need the unlimited. And you've got, here's, this is a manual, six-speed. Would you also get the manual? Uh, yeah, I would probably get the manual, so that means getting the Pentastar, um, which is fine. I, I, I really do like the Pentastar. Um, and then in terms of trim, I'd probably do a Sport with roll-down windows, but AC. So I, I think for resale, you have to have AC. But I would do steel wheels. Um, they're painted black steel wheels. And I probably, I really do like this granite crystal metallic color which is a carryover, so in case you didn't notice, these are the same colors. Um, I, I would do that color as well. Yeah, okay, and I guess if it were me, I would go with what Nathan has chosen. I'd get the uh, truck. I don't know what color. I like white. I think it's a really blank canvas. You can do a lot with it. I would get the automatic uh, just because, <laughs> because when you're off-roading, it's a lot easier. Yeah. You know, it can be tricky because you can stall it. With a, there's a lot going on, when, especially taking on tough trail so I'd get the G, I'd get the JT the the pickup truck and uh, I'm hoping that when it comes out we'll be there I know we'll be there yeah and maybe we can even get one long term to review that would be awesome looking forward to one doing more that. thing before we wrap it up yes let's go back to the front of the JL okay because we've got the daytime running lamps on the yep. rings yep. and I, I think those look just so cool and do you have the hat still uh, where's the hat it's in the it's okay. over, it's right yeah. there on top of the tower here okay so I think we have a winner for the hat we have a winner let's do it in the front yeah let's do it in the front we have a winner here Tommy you, you, you give the head away. Quite the stretch here. There we go. All right, you will give the head away. So, and thank you guys for joining, by the way. We really love that you guys are joining these live sessions and uh, participating. You want, and to the, you want to show the lights? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Take a, take a look hey, at these is that, new... Is that visible? That's nice. LED rings. Are those standard? No, they are not standard. Ah. So that's a good point. If you get a Sport uh, Sport S on the JL, you're still going to get halogens, correct? But you're still going to get the turn signals mounted here in the fenders. Yeah, you will. But they're not LED. Nope. Nope. They're, they're just kind of good old... And these are LED lights. Yeah, the these are full and, LED. And let's talk about production. They're still made in Toledo. Every Wrangler is made in Toledo. Uh, and right now they have two lines going. They have uh, the new JL, which, which has, has its own production line, and they still have the JK production line going. So they're building both of them together. Uh, obviously, this one is a lot more expensive, so I think Jeep figures if you come from the Jeep dealership, this is the candy, but if you can't afford the candy, you can buy the caramel. Why are you pointing at Nathan? Yeah, why is <laughs> the candy right here? This is the candy, guys. Because I am so sweet to the touch. <laughs> now, the other thing is, think about it this way. You should be able to get some decent discounts on the JK in the near future. I doubt it. You, th you don't think they'll do any discounts no, at all? No, they sell every single one they make, mm. and the JK has the highest resale value. Uh, of it does have a really high, high resale, resale value, value yeah. so I don't think they're going to discount them. I think you're going to be saving what the you know difference the, the is the normal difference is difference between the two. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised though if, if dealerships do mark up the new ones. That's that happens a lot. Yeah, of course, whenever a new vehicle comes by, they always mark it up. So if you have to be the first, 
you'll probably be paying for it. Yep. All right, now, Tommy, let's give the head away. Woo -hoo, thank you. Who's the winner? Who's so the, winner? The, the cargo volume, the way I measured it, not the way that engineers in Toledo measured it, but okay. the way I did. Okay. Um, so the, I, the wrong way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Andre does everything right. Come on. <laughs> I measured 31.8 cubic feet. Uh -huh. That's not bad, right? If right. you think about a sedan or a crossover, that's a really good volume. Yep. And the username H0M0L4A. Thanks for making that easy. Yeah. So you, if that's you were the first to come closest at 32. So you got to send us uh, an email to info at tflcar.com uh, with uh, how do we know it's him? How do we how do we know? Uh, just do it really soon, and the first one that comes in will be the one that we <laughs> yeah. Right, so hurry up, send it quickly, send and then we'll it know right it's now. you. Send it right now, please. Okay. All right. So that's that's it. That's the hat. That's the hat. Congratulations okay. on the Congratulations. hat. Congratulations. Okay. And guys, thank you very much for joining us. Nathan, uh, we give the Jeep away tomorrow. It goes back to, to the press fleet. Are you going to be sad? No, because I want the off-road version. I want something that we can actually Fair take off-road. And we've really bounced around in this thing a lot. I mean, seriously, guys, there are like 10 different videos that we've done just with this vehicle. Am yeah. I right? Yeah, we've taken the top down. We've seen how waterproof it is we've gone road tripping in it drag we've racing drag racing which is coming this weekend Brought it, put it into the snow we're one of the first to actually put this thing into the snow yeah, you, yeah. you guys did a snow okay. review uh, and once again i want to thank our sponsors ruggedradios.com i want to thank our friends over at uh, jl forum uh, regular for, forums yeah. regular forums for helping us with this i think they're, they're J, they have jt form not coming right that one's yeah. going to be really popular yeah and i especially want to thank you guys for joining us uh, and for you know letting us uh, do these fun things with Jeep. Without you, we couldn't do it. Absolutely and I, not. And I know we weren't able to answer every question. I know you guys were asking about showing wiring harnesses, and we, we can't quite you know just do everything live. Yeah, but what we can do is we'll review this in the near future. It's going to become a regular video, and we'll try to answer a couple more uh, questions. Yes. All right. Thank Alrighty. you, guys. Take care, and uh, come holiday. back this weekend where you can see which is faster, the new JL, a BMW X3, or, or, a, Hummer. or a Hummer. H2. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I drove the BMW, he drove the Jeep, and he drove the Hummer. H2, it's a Tonka toy. Yeah, see you guys next time. Ciao. All right, see you guys.